Welcome to part two on determining if the given infinite series converges or diverges. In part one, we discussed how the best option would be to use the ratio test or the limit comparison test to determine convergence or divergence. And in part one, we use the limit comparison test to show the given series does converge. So for this video, we're going to use a ratio test to hopefully confirm that the series converges. But before we do, here's the work from the previous video using the limit comparison test. One challenge for the limit comparison test is we did have to know to compare the given series to the summation of one divided by two n, which converges by the geometric series test. One advantage of the ratio test is that we don't have to compare it to another series. So let's review the ratio test and then apply it. To apply the ratio test, we find the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n, and then based upon this value, we can determine if the given series converges, diverges, or if the test fails. If L is less than one, then the given series converges. If L is greater than one, then the given series diverges. And if L equals one, the test fails, and we have to apply a different test. So a sub n from the given series would be three n plus one divided by n to the power of two n, and therefore a sub n plus one will substitute n plus one for n. So we'd have three times n plus one plus one divided by n plus one times two to the power of n plus one. And just to review, the reason why the ratio test is a good choice is because if we find this quotient here, notice how it would simplify because we have two to the n here and two to the power of n plus one here. So let's go ahead and set up our limit. We'll have the limit as n approaches infinity of, now it says absolute value, but notice how since n is equal to one, these are never negative, so we can ignore the absolute value. And the numerator would be a sub n plus one. Notice if we distribute, we'd have three n plus three plus one. Let's write this as three n plus four divided by n plus one times two to the power of n plus one divided by a sub n, which is three to the n plus one divided by n times two to the n. Now remember this fraction by represents division. So it's the top fraction divided by the bottom fraction. But instead of dividing by the fraction on the bottom, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll have the limit as n approaches infinity of the top fraction. And then instead of dividing by the bottom fraction, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll have times n times two to the n divided by three n plus one. Notice in this form, two to the n and two to the n plus one will simplify. Two to the n plus one has one more factor of two than two to the n. So this simplifies to one, all this simplifies to one factor of two. So now let's go ahead and multiply these. We have three n plus four times n, that would be three n squared plus four n. Then for the denominator, we have n plus one times two, that's gonna be two n plus two. We have to multiply this by three n plus one. So two n times three n is six n squared. And then we have two n times one, that's two n and then two times three n, that's six n. Two n plus six n is eight n. And then two times one is two. And now to find this limit, notice how the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same, they're both degree two, and therefore this limit is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients, which, which would be three six or one half. We'll notice how one half is less than one, and therefore the given series, the summation of a sub n, 
converges. Let's go ahead and summarize this. By the ratio test, since the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n is equal to one half, which is less than one, the given series, the summation from n equals one to infinity of three n plus one divided by n times two to the n converges. But here's a nice example of an infinite series where we can use the ratio test to show the series converges. Or as we saw in part one, we could also use a limit comparison test to show the series converges. I hope you found this helpful.